Hi, this is Brad Linder with Little Puting, and I have here two tablets that were released this week, the Amazon Kindle Fire and the Nook tablet. Uh, we're looking at a $200 tablet versus a $250 tablet. Similar hardware, they both have the uh, same dual-core TI OMAP4 processor. Um, they both have 7-inch uh, 1024 by 600 pixel IPS displays. Uh, main differences here are that the Amazon is tied to the Amazon services versus the Nook tied to the Barnes & Noble services. And uh, this guy has 512 megs of RAM versus 1 gigabyte, 8 gigs of storage versus 16 gigabytes, although it's not all user accessible. Uh, this has an SD card slot, this does not. Neither of them has a camera, but this one has a microphone. And this has a few more buttons, and you'll notice it's also a little bit larger. Uh, has more of a bezel around the edge, whereas this has a uh, sort of glass display that uh, reaches from edge to edge. I actually find that the uh, the Nook is a little bit more comfortable to hold. Performance-wise, they're pretty similar. The software is a little bit different on each of them. Um, I've noticed that the Netflix application, for instance, streams video much more smoothly on the Nook than it does on the Kindle. But that's not really what I wanted to talk about today. What I wanted to show you is this. We're going to go ahead and load this guy up, and you can see I've got access to the Amazon App Store, which lets me download uh, as many as 20,000 different applications onto the device, probably not all at once. Um, whereas the Kindle instead comes with the Barnes & Noble, um, sorry, the, the Nook instead comes with the Barnes & Noble App Store, and there's far fewer applications available for that. But it turns out that it is not that difficult to install the Amazon App Store. And once you've done that, you can install all sorts of alternate apps uh, for instance, I've replaced the, well not replaced, but I've supplemented the home screen with uh, Go Launcher X. So the typical Kindle home screen looks like this and has access to your uh, Kindle applications, but you can also go to Go Launcher and have a much more traditional Android-like experience. And here's a number of applications that I've installed uh, including the Amazon Kindle application on the Nook. So you can read books from either the Barnes & Noble uh, bookstore or from uh, Kindle. In terms of other applications that we've got going here, and you can see I also have, this is the Barnes & Noble library that I've installed here, the Barnes & Noble search app. So you, you can access all sorts of different uh, files, including the ones that came with it. But by doing this, now we have access to things like a file browser, this doesn't seem to want to let me swipe to go back. Um, there we go. The Dolphin web browser, which supports browser tabs and a couple of other options and uh, plugins that are not available on the default launcher. Um, Google Maps I was able to install. works reasonably well. There's no uh, GPS here, of course, but it can um, allow you to search various maps anyway. And let's see, we've got the email application that came with the device, uh, navigation settings. Uh, of course, you know, click and call, nothing is going to happen here, but you can hit up the web browser and uh, adjust the Go Launcher settings and access all of your applications if you want, or just view running applications, and so forth. So uh, overall, you can get a very uh, standard Android tablet-like experience just by installing an alternate home screen uh, application like Go Launcher, and um, installing some third-party applications that are not available from the official uh, uh, Barnes & Noble store. Um, still, you know, some of the experiences that you get are going to be best if you use the official apps. Uh, for instance, the Netflix app is really well designed for this tablet. Um, the Pandora application that you get from the Barnes & Noble store looks a little bit different from the one that you would download from the Amazon app store, um, and I think it works better. So, if an app is available from Barnes & Noble, you're probably best off getting it from them first, but if you want to install some applications that are not available from Barnes & Noble, uh, it is fairly easy to do that, and you can find instructions on how to do that at lilliputing.com, uh, thanks to the guys at XDA Developers Forum for uh, helping to discover how to do this. I was, uh, I was trying to copy some installer files onto my device earlier today, wasn't really able to get them to load. Um, but once you get started, it's actually pretty easy. So, uh, and just to show you again that we do still have access to all of the main functions here. This is not a rooted device. All we've done is enabled 
the ability to install applications that are not normally um, available from the Barnes & Noble shop. So this is Brad Linder taking a quick look at the Barnes & Noble Nook tablet doing many of the things that you can do with an Amazon Kindle Fire. Now you can't stream um, videos from the Amazon Watch instantly on the Nook um, and it's not going to synchronize with your account quite the same way um, but overall the uh, if you're trying to decide between these two tablets, you should know you can install the Nook application on the Barnes & Noble Kindle, or you can install the Kindle application on the Nook tablet. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing.